Welcome to Granada's Workshop on the Tuesday, the 9th of the 6th, 2015. Uh, the auction style skeleton is back and I have a great guest, I think, this week for you guys. Uh, certainly it's uh, something that excited me when I, when I learned about it and uh, yeah, the, my guest is an all-round good fellow, to be honest. And uh, I would like to welcome Andrew Fletcher. Welcome to Awake Radio. Thank you very much, Stephen. I um, hope the... Uh your, your listeners are going to enjoy this subject. My, fir my first question would be, who designed your bed? Who was it and what qualifications did he have or she have to state that the human race should sleep on a flat bed? Actually, the literature states, uh, the medical literature that is, that sleeping on a flat bed is probably the worst thing you can do, and yet we all do it. It's really bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's something I'd never really questioned until such times as I'd, I'd come across yourself. Um, how did you come across it and what made you aware of, of the situation? Well, it was, it's a strange, it's a strange one really. I, I bought um, a GCSE biology book because I was struggling to try and understand how fluid was transported in, tr in trees, how sap moved from the roots up to the leaves. And um, I bought the book from a car boot sale, and within 20 minutes, I'd actually solved a problem that's puzzled scientists uh, since science began. Um, the, 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 the problem was that they asked the wrong question. So the question is, how do trees raise water from the leaves, from the roots up to the leaves? Well, that suggests a one-way flow. But if we look at a tree, we've got a downward flow and a return flow. So the downward flow is in the phloem laden with uh, heavy sap. And the return flow is in the xylem with dilute sap. Because the xylem picks up water from the soil. Now, the, the theory I came up with was that the evaporation from the leaves of a tree, which concentrates the, um, the sap by 98%, because it evaporates 98% of all of the water that enters through the roots, through the leaves... So that must concentrate the sap at the top of the tree. Now the leaves produce sugars by photosynthesis and um, the sap also contains nutrients from the soil. So that massive loss of moisture must make the sap denser at the top of the tree than at the bottom of the tree. So gravity dictates that that uh, denser sap will migrate towards a sink. Now that sink can be a fruit or it can be down through the trunk of the tree out through the branches or down to the roots. Now as the sap percolates down through the tree, the tree takes up uh, the excess or spend salts in its cycle of growth, storing them away in the uh, ever-increasing girth of its trunk and the branches. So any sap laden with uh, salt and sugars that reaches the roots is diluted by incoming um, water from the soil. So that makes the upward flow always less dense than the downward flow. So the, the correct question should have been, how do trees circulate sap? If they'd have asked that question, the answer would have been blatantly obvious. You know, the downward flow generates a return flow. Because as the, as the sap flows down one side, it generates molecular drag. In other words, each molecule that moves down is dragging on the molecule behind it. And that molecule behind it can reach right the way back down through the xylem flow and out into the and out into the groundwater. So in effect, that downflow is not only dragging water up to the top of a, a, a giant Californian redwood, it's actually pulling the water in towards the roots. Now to test this, I set up a simple experiment in Brixham. I used six millimeter, uh, millimeter bulk tubing, uh, the kind that's used in the pub trade, nylon tubing, clear. And I had a giant uh, loop of tubing, which was strung up 24 metres up a cliff. And uh, the science book says you can only go to 10 metres. Well, I didn't take any notice of that. Uh, and neither do the trees. <laughs> so, so what I showed in front of Forestry Commission scientists and journalists um, back in, I think it was 1997, or it could have been earlier than 97. Um, what I showed there was a tiny pinch of salt in one side, which of this, this tube is filled with boiled water. So we've taken out any gas bubbles and both open ends are pushed into two bottles, both equal level with the ground. And to the centre of the tube before it's hoisted up the cliff, I've added 10 millilitres of coloured salt solution with food dye. 
and as it rises the salt solution starts flowing down one side and one bottle starts to overflow and the fluid level bottle on, on, on the other side the fluid level on the other side goes down which means that tiny 10 millilitres of, of salt solution is lifting thousands of times its own volume vertically without a pump to 24 metres. There's a video on YouTube of the actual experiment on that day. And then when I when I did that, I, I actually I repeated the experiment many times. Um, I realised we're dealing here with a, a non-living physical force that must apply wherever evaporation takes place at the upper end of a, of a column that contains liquids which have heavy, denser substances. Now that includes the blood in the body, the lymphatic system, and the cerebrospinal fluid. So the evaporation from our respiratory tract is doing exactly the same as the trees. So we're boiling away water. Now that means that the blood that supplies the lungs, as it enters, is less dense, but as it exits the lungs, it becomes more dense because we're evaporating water away from this liquid. So it passes through the heart, and then the heart injects it back into the main artery. And if we're the right way around according to gravity, i.e. standing up or, or lying on an inclined bed, then gravity can pull that denser blood and actually assist the heart to get the circulation around the body. Uh, when I nailed this, I thought this is really interesting. And one of the first things we tested it with was varicose veins and edema and uh, within four weeks a varicose vein had gone flat but not just one varicose vein it was a vein on a nurse who had also become interested in the in the theory as well a nurse called Stephanie Ness who tilted her bed and she reported in four weeks that her varicose vein had gone flat now that told me that we're now something really important because the medical profession will say to ease your varicose veins you need to raise your legs up we've done the opposite and it's had a lasting effect. Mm. Well, uh, you know, edema is a, a thing that I'm familiar with, and uh, that's what I'm trying to, to use the incline therapy, uh, bed therapy at the moment for uh, my feet, they're obviously swelling up. But effectively what you're talking about, the sap in the tree, is, is it's a circulatory problem that we're, we're, we're basically improving, if you like, yes. by living on an incline bed. So... Uh, another uh, angle, if you'll excuse the pun, was to see if anybody had done anything with an angled bed or an inclined bed uh, before. And it turns out that um, in ancient Constantinople, um, the hospitals that were uh, praised as being the most successful, um, uh, having the most successful track record in treating people with illnesses, had their beds inclined according to a, a, a painting which I'd found. And then I went back further, and um, in the, in the uh, ancient Egyptian tombs, um, when they the, the you know the uh, the grave robbers went in and pulled out all the gold and the jewels, they missed the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room was that the beds were inclined, and to this date, no one has asked why these uh, very clever people were sleeping on inclined beds. I went as far to ask a, a curator at the Boston Museum to measure one of these beds and it was raised exactly six inches higher at the head end, exactly the same angle that I had arrived at by observing the way fluids flowed around a, um, a closed loop of tubing, again with a pinch of salt at the pillar end. If I raised the bed up to four inches, um, then what I got was a, a two-tier flow in one side of the, of the closed loop of tubing. In other words, um, the, the coloured salt solution was flowing down on the bottom of the one tube and the return flow was above it. So I had two directional flow in one side of the tube. When I started to get over five inches, then the whole loop of tubing circulated. So that represented the down flow as the arteries and the return flow as the venous return. And uh, that was how I arrived at the angle, but they got there before me. And in fact, if we go back to the, the uh, sweating sickness in the Tudor period, um, what they found was that this, this illness, which is still a mystery today, had killed millions of people. And um, what they found was that if they placed two guards by the side of the bed, presumably to prevent the person from laying down, 
because generally if they lay down they were dead, they were dead by morning. They survived and um, a tempest um, raged across the country for a few days, a storm. Um, this is actually written up in the, in the Annals of History. And uh, it swept the unusually um, um, humid atmosphere, it swept it away. Now, if you sweep out high humidity from the atmosphere, what you're doing is you're enabling the lungs to actually clear fluid from the lungs. If you're breathing in as much water as you're breathing out, that has an impact on your circulation. And then if you sleep on a flatbed, that's a double impact on your circulation. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that before about the humidity. Yeah, that makes an, a whole lot of sense. Uh, yes. Um, and, and the strange thing is, in, in hospitals, they actually nebulize water into people's lungs. Mm -hmm. Now, you should have a certain amount of water, but maybe this should be done intermittently so as not to uh, not to stagnate the circulation in the lungs. Mm -hmm. well, in my case, when I've been in hospital, uh, three times a day, maybe getting uh, fluids put into your lungs. Uh, so that would seem to be a, a, an awful lot uh, to what you're saying there. Yeah, um, well, doctors and nurses are recommending uh, raising the foot, foot end of the bed to relieve edema and varicose veins. And um, this, 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 this does actually provide some temporary relief because it shifts the fluid problem uh, back into the upper torso. But when you stand up again in the morning, the edema comes back. Now with the sloping bed, or the inclined bed, this alters the, the pressure in the veins because the edema in the legs is caused because um, the pressure in the veins is greater than the pressure from the surrounding tissue. So the fluid flows out from the veins, from the blood in the veins, into the, into the surrounding tissue causing the swelling. Now with the sloping bed, as we've discussed, it, it actually pulls the vein, varicose veins in. So what we've done is we've applied tension to the blood in the veins and we've also lowered the pressure in the blood in the veins, which causes the fluid to migrate from the legs back into the circulatory system, through the circulatory system and out into the bladder where it's filtered and, uh, and then excreted in the urine. And that's the other part of the, uh, the circulatory system in the body because as the blood flows down the arteries, um, the concentrated blood with the salts, it flows through the kidneys, the kidneys filter out these salts and we excrete them in the urine. That's why hot urine will sink to the bottom of the toilet. So the blood passing through the kidneys is less dense, meaning that the blood in the venous return is always less dense than the downflow in the arteries. Mm. You, you say the venous return, you, would you like to explain that a little bit more? It's the, the, the flow of blood back through the veins to the heart. Ah, right, I see. Yeah, yeah I see. So that's the uh, the, the, the uh, oxygen deficient blood returning back to the heart. Uh, to the heart, yeah. Got you. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Um, you, you've obviously had uh, some success with uh, different people with, uh, you know, obviously legs that have become enlarged and, and so on. Um, would you like to tell some of those? Yes. Um, the, well, the first. <laughs> the first problem I had was I was looking at ladies' legs for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was looking for varicose veins and edema, which is a strange thing to be doing. Um, but my mother had uh, varicose veins and edema, and um, I managed to convince her that I wasn't insane. So she eventually succumbed and tilted the bed, and after four weeks she phoned me up and said, uh, what's this bed all about? I said, look, Mum, I have explained it to you. She said, well, run it by me one more time. I said, well, you've got something to tell me about your veins. She said, oh, yeah, the veins have improved. She said, but I'm standing here twiddling my toes, move my ankle on my left foot. I said, well, what, do you want a round of applause? She said, I haven't done that for 10 years. <laughs> right, very uh, good. That, 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 that was interesting because that, that indicated that not only was the, the, the blood circulation uh, affected, but this was also the, the circulation in the nervous system, because she'd obviously got some nerve damage, having lost control of the limb and, mm -hmm. and the sensitivity. 
So that then led on to, to other research into neurological conditions. But, but back to your edema. Um, yes, uh, we've had quite, quite a few people reporting in that edema um, is reduced significantly. And the most spectacular was a guy with Parkinson's over in Torquay. Um, he had a severely swollen body, uh, best described, he was like a water balloon. And um, we tilted his bed uh, for the Parkinson's. And uh, within a few days, his wife was on the phone saying, I can't stop my husband urinating. It was like a non-stopping a non or uh, a continuous stream of urine. And by the end of the week, his clothes literally fell on the floor. He'd lost so much weight and fluid. Can imagine. Yeah, yeah. But, but the other one was uh, an interesting one. I had a meeting with a, a vascular surgeon called Peter Lewis and another vascular surgeon called Celeste. And this was at Lewis's home in, in Torquay. And uh, I showed him my experiments on the kitchen table and his reaction was, he said, my God, he said, I thought pure science was dead in the water. He said, here it is on the kitchen table. He said, this just makes so much sense. He said, what, what do you think would happen if someone was running? What would happen to the pressures in the veins and, and the arteries? I said, I would expect to see an increase in arterial pressure and an equal decrease in venous pressure. He says, that's exactly what happens. And nobody in medical school understands why. Right. And then he said, I have a patient uh, at Torquay Hospital who has a, a situs of the liver, which is um, swelling of the, of the abdominal cavity. Uh, with fluid and uh, he described her as being like a giant water balloon and he said we've tried diuretics and nothing worked he said i'm just going to leave the meeting for a second he said i'll go to Torquay." and he didn't it was just around the corner from where peter lived and uh, i'll just go and check on this lady and when he come back he said it's exactly as you said he said the fluid loss i've seen is unprecedented um, no uh, no diuretics work and raising the, the legs didn't work, but uh, tilting the whole bed has, has shown remarkable improvements. So he was convinced, but lots of promises have been made, you know, that the medical profession will help me here with studies and um, help, me, help me get over these hurdles and nothing ever happens, you know. Mm -hmm. you, just left, <laughs> you just left to do what you can with the limited resources that you have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, effectively they can't make money out of it. I think is why they're not helping you. Yeah, that's that's the problem, Steve. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. If there was a lot of money involved and people could make a lot of money, then you'd get the help of vascular surgeons. In fact, Ed Zard Ernst, Professor Ed Zard Ernst, uh, I had a meeting with him at Exeter Hospital, and um, he was really fascinated by the experiments I showed him on his worktop. And um, he agreed that we should conduct a study into varicose veins and edema because uh, the visual observations would be difficult to disprove. So he arranged for me to see a doctor who would give us access to his patients. I travelled to Exeter on my own, um, went to see this guy as I walked through the door. He said, are you Mr Fletcher? I said, yes. He said, let me make one thing clear. I do not want anything to do with you, your theory or any trial. Do I make myself clear? I said, perfectly. I walked away. Yeah. You know, yeah. but he, he, he makes a living from repeat surgery operating on varicose veins. Yeah. You know, um, so why would he want to learn that two blocks of wood under someone's bed could actually prevent those veins from getting worse and improve them? Yeah. So that's the difference between somebody that's doing a job and a healer. Yeah. You know, effectively. Yeah. Well, I'm just in it for the science, you know. He asked, he asked me a little bit about myself. I, I have an engineering background. I was a mechanical engineer, um, like yourself. Um, heavy engineering as well. I was a boiler maker. Well, an apprentice boiler maker in the Midlands. Um, quite a varied background. Lateral thinking is my, my, uh, my main stumbling block because um, if I see a problem, I try and solve it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it becomes quite an occupation, you know, 20 years later, I'm still trying to solve problems for people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, from, from what I've talked to you, Andrew, uh, and it's been thoroughly fascinating every time I've spoke to you, you know, uh, distilling your own oils and uh, your solar powers and, and things. I know that's a little bit off subject, but 
uh, certainly it shows you've a, you're a man of many talents. That's for sure. Oh, I, I like to think. I like to think. I'm, I mean, my worst nightmare is having to call someone out to do a job for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Granada's workshop basically I, I try and promote uh, to be self-dependent, and then you're exactly what that is. You know, you're being self-dependent, so, oh. so I, I find that fascinating, really. So, so the the question the question here is, you know, how safe is that flatbed? You know, it's 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 labelled deathbed. You know, that mm. should be a big clue, really, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, three thirty is the time that people die in their sleep, or mm. most people. Um, and that's exactly the time that lying on a flatbed causes a two degree drop in body temperature. Now, when we measured our mouth temperature exactly the same as they did for the two degree drop in healthy people, um, what we found was that we, we didn't get that two degree drop when we were on an inclined bed. Our body temperature remained stable, which was fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and if we go back, you know, the doctors know exactly what's going on here. Um, Dr. Richard Asher in 1942, he, he wrote, uh, uh, look at the patient lying alone in bed. What a pathetic picture he makes. The blood clotting in his veins, the lime draining from his bones, the scobola stacking up in his colon, the flesh rotting from his seat, the urine leaking from his distended bladder, and the spark evaporating from his soul. Teach us to live that we may dread unnecessary time in bed. Get people up and we may save patients from an early grave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 1942, and yet hospitals are still um, assessed on how many beds they have. Yeah. Now, yeah. I've, I've got some horror stories as well like with my own father. Um, in a coma in, in hospital. Um, I had a foot, tooth and nail to get his bed on an angle. Um, they told us he had hours to live. He had pancreatic cancer, um, which had spread from a, a gallbladder. And um, he was in a coma. His legs were massive. They came back to the edema. They had to cut his pyjamas um, because they were so tight. And... Uh, the um, urine in his catheter was brown and bloodstained and thick like tar. We were told he had multiple organ failure and he only had hours to live. And I said, look, you've got to tilt the bed. And first of all, they refused, thinking I was daft. And then finally they gave up and I got a little bit angry and tilted his bed. And every time I turned my back, they put the bed back down again. Um, but he came out of his coma and his urine started to run clear within hours. His organs started functioning again, and the yellowness was going from his skin. So this this was this was quite remarkable. Um, and yet they kept trying to put the bed back flat. Uh, he walked out of the hospital. He had a stent op uh, operation um, to ease the pressure in his gallbladder, and uh, he enjoyed another eight months of life when he was given hours to live. Unfortunately, yeah. the pancreatic cancer got the better of him, and no amount of education from me about changing his diet um, mm -hmm. seemed to sink in. You know, he still enjoyed his bacon sandwich and his glass of whiskey. Um, but, but I mean, I love that guy. You know, mm -hmm. he was amazing, but and a hard man as well. He, he never took so much as a as a paracetamol for pain while he was in that hospital. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what you're expressing there must have been infuriating to find that they're coming behind your back and, and changing things. Yes. Uh, and I mean, obviously they're trying to protect their, their um, what's the word, but they're protect their job to some extent, not really caring for the patient. And, and they're, they're clearly seeing that, that it's effective what you were doing. But you know? they're, they're working from a book, Steve, that's the problem, you know, and, and, and if there are mistakes in that book, they'll keep repeating the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And because that's that's the way it's done, yes. if you like. Yeah, that's the way they were taught in med school, you know. Yeah, yeah, which is is sad. I really find that is very sad in in this this earth uh, that people can see things and do things and in front of their eyes and then and plain just turn around and refuse to 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 look at it and do it, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, we we 
we've touched on a few things there about the, the, the dangers of bed rest. Um, what happens with the, the heart when you, you sleep on an inclined bed? Well, the heart rate decreases by 10 to 12 beats per minute, and your respiration rate decreases by 4 to 5 breaths per minute, yet your circulation increases. Now, I tested this on sleeping dogs, three bull terriers, to be honest, um, who have no problem sleeping. So we had them uh, tested the heart rate and the respiration rate just against a stopwatch while they were sleeping flat, and then while they were sleeping on an incline. And their, their reductions were exactly the same, a decrease in heart rate by 10 to 12 beats per minute, and in respiration rate by 4 to 5 breaths per minute. So clearly, you know, we're dealing with something that's not just human-specific, but it goes right across the animal world as well. Well, I can, I can verify that. Sorry, I was away from the mic. I can verify that to be right. I have an oxymeter as I was speaking to you, and you put in your finger and you, as your heart rate and your blood gases. And uh, I'll maybe go into a little bit uh, my my dealings with the inclined bed, but uh, the times I have managed to get into bed, uh, and uh, once I sort of become relaxed uh, in bed, um, my heart rate is generally the same about my blood. So if my bloods are 95, my heart rate generally is 95. Uh, since I inclined the bed and I've been getting in, my heart rate being 95, and, and sorry, my blood's been 95, and my heart rate's been about 85. So I can <laughs> verify what you're saying there is absolutely true. I mean, not discussed that before uh, when we were chatting, but that's absolutely right. Uh, it's, it's dropped by about 10 beats a minute. Yep. The other thing we found was that we, we measured the density of our urine because, as I said earlier, um, the kidneys are filtering out the salts and, and, and material from the blood. Um, so I would expect, if we we're on an incline, to see a change in urine density. Now, we measured it using a simple hydrometer, the type you'd use in, in uh, beer making. And um, what we found was that the, the flat bed rest um, caused the, the urine uh, to decrease over and above normal daily activity. In other words, the kidneys are not functioning properly. Head down bed rest caused the urine density to drop to near water level. In other words, no salts were being excreted in the bladder. And when we raised the head end of the bed, we found the density of the urine went up and the urine became stronger and more dense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I was just clocking the time there, uh, Andrew, and uh, we're going to get into about 25 too. Um, just one question on you were talking about that, about the density of your urine. Um, would uh, keeping properly hydrated be the optimum way of, of improving your chances of doing something for you? Yes. Or is, is there something else that we can do to help that? Huh? Yes, I have a bottle of water by the side of my bed um, and, and advocate that people should be drinking more water on, on inclined bed therapy because there is, there's going to be a huge detox going on when you first tilt your bed. Um, so you need to replace the excess fluids uh, that we're, we're evaporating and we're excreting in the urine um, which you know it, it's logically it makes it makes it we should all be drinking more water anyway, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yes and and if it means <coughs> having to get out in the night to have a have a wee being upright is 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 a great thing you know yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. in fact joan vernikos um, who's the former head of life sciences in in nasa um advocates that uh, people, especially the elderly, should stand every 20 minutes. And she's saying sitting down is killing us and bed rest is killing us. So make a point of standing every 20 minutes, if only for a couple of minutes, which I, which I find fascinating. What she, what she did was there was a, an 80, I think he was 82 or 92 year old. Um, uh, he was the former, he, he was in the job before John Vernikos at NASA. And uh, he was in a wheelchair, and she advised him during the seminar to raise uh, to, to to actually get out of the wheelchair and stand every every twenty minutes. And um, when he was visited by someone who got back to Joan, said that he actually served them uh, the meal, and uh, he wasn't in a wheelchair anymore. Cool. So that's yeah. just just standing up. And mm -hmm. in fact, if we take gravity away altogether which is astronauts uh, in space, um, the aging process 
uh, is accelerated by over 10% than it is here on Earth. 10 times, sorry, 10 times faster than it is here on Earth. Um, you get massive uh, bone decalcification, osteoporosis, neurological damage, kidney stones, gall stones, bladder stones, visual disturbances, changes in the fluid, um, the skin be becomes much thinner. And, and, and age is much faster in space. And uh, NASA have, have studied the effects of um, flat bed rest and, and head down bed rest. And in fact, they're paying people $17,000 uh, just to sleep uh, or stay in a, a bed that's tilted down by six, uh, six degrees. Uh, and um, they're doing this to, to actually mimic what happens in space. So they are aging these people 10 times faster than if they were having normal daily activity. Um, so the, the, again, the, the, the mirror there is the, the bed rest is actually used to reflect what happens to the body when we travel in microgravity in space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you couldn't pay me that amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Hello, Andrew. Hi, David. How are you? Um, Hi, thank you. Good, good. Hi, David. Hello, is that Steve? It is. Hi, Steve. Uh, Meet you're, you're live on Awake Radio. Uh, normally, I would go to and bring you on, but you, you, we just decided to call you in, so uh, welcome to Awake. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you talking from? Um, I'm a Scotsman living in Ireland. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> That, uh, that we go right out around the world, uh, America, Australia, the South Africa, the whole, the whole shooting match. So, right. and you're from America, I believe. Oh no, I'm a typical Yorkshireman. Oh right, <laughs> I should have recognised that accent. Yeah. Been to Ireland once and uh, enjoyed it, and uh, been down to Devon where Andrew lives. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's Andrew all oh, round about. 1993, I think. Oh, it was, uh, I think it was about 90, 95, 96. I think 95, 96, yeah. right. Time flies. It does. So, so I'm assuming that you've, uh, you've tried the inclined bed therapy, David. Yes, well, um, I, when I first met Andrew, he, he mentioned about this inclined bed and, and all his research uh, with trees and things like that, and circulation of nature. And um, I decided, or oh, must have been 95, 96, to, to buy a, a, an inclined bed off him. And um, within a few months, uh, he was so generous, him and his wife drove 350 miles north up, up to um, where I lived and uh, delivered the bed. Um, and I was very, uh, very grateful at the time. Uh, I, I still am because uh, I've slept on that bed ever since. And it took a while to a perseverance to uh, to adjust myself to it, but um, it certainly paid off. And, uh, could I ask uh, what what the, the benefits you receive from it? Well, uh, prior to meeting Andrew, I, I'd been a, an instrument engineer working offshore almost 24 hours 7 uh, for about um, 30 years. And at, at the end of it, in fact, it was the, the disaster of Piper Alpha in 1989 that uh, decided me to, to chuck my construction boots in. Mm -hmm. But at the time, um, I was suffering or oh, the following medical conditions, keratitis, which is uh, an irritation of the, of the eye, which doctors didn't know what, how to cure it, and uh, tinnitus, which they, they couldn't at that point in time, deafness, because I'd been working offshore in a very noisy environment, um, and uh, I'd also had a prolapsed disc, disc for about or oh, maybe 20 years before before I met Andrew. But that produced uh, sciatica, and um, by the time I met uh, Andrew, uh, I had 
arthritis of the, of the spine and uh, also my fingers. I, I, I couldn't bear to pick anything up. In fact, I, I used to play the piano and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't touch the notes for the, for the pain I was suffering in my fingers. Yes. And since since then, uh, having persevered with, uh, with the inclined bed at six inches, which Andrew made, um, it, all those conditions have virtually gone. Um, and to be quite truthful, I've never needed to see any doctor or medical physician uh, since 2001. Uh, and I've never taken any, since that date, I've never taken any uh, medical prescriptions or anything like that whatsoever. It's, it's been a gradual process within my body. You can't uh, have, a, have an agenda when you, when you start laying on an inclined bed. It's, it's, um, you're just wasting your own time having an agenda, thinking that, yes, I'm going to get better tomorrow or next week or cure all, cure all, cure all ills and things like that. It's, it's, that that's uh, it, it's not on because uh, you've got to maintain a good uh, a good life uh, with uh, and, and sleep on this inclined bed uh, as much as you can persevere because it's well worth it. Sure, sure, sure. And, and what, do you, what do you think the the the, the healed, uh, David Andrew? What would be your assumption of it? Well, David's one case of many. I mean, over over twenty years, I've heard many many cases like David's. Um, it, it seems to identify that the the flatbed was actually the cause of many of the problems. Uh, possibly, as he mentioned on the rigs sleeping on a flatbed in a very damp, as we discussed earlier, a very damp climate um, would have a double whammy effect. In fact, um, many of the, um, uh, the people that work in the, in the fishing uh, on the boats and trawlers, um, you see them walking around in, in, the, in the harbour areas and they're crippled up with, with, with um, severe problems with the skeletal uh, frame, um, arthritis, and doubled over and you know, and, and not a great job uh, like David's job. But um, so if we have identified that the flatbed could have been the cause, then if we take the flatbed out of the equation, we should all get better. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a cure-all for everyone, but, uh, you know, yeah. I've, I've had success with spinal cord injury, complete spinal cord injury, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, um, even a problem with human fertility, believe it or not, uh, influenza, chicken pox. So it, it boosts the immune system as well. We, we tend not to get as ill as, as, we, as we did when we slept on a flatbed. You know, if you get man flu, the man usually lies down flat and gets very ill. Um, the, the wife doesn't get man flu because she's too busy running around looking after the husband. Yeah. Uh, so they're always upright, uh, so they tend not to get as ill as the, as, as the men. And in fact, if we go back to the sweating sickness, it was probably the men that died more so than the women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, talking about man flu and colds, I can't remember how many years it is I had such, a, such an event, you know. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, David, thank you very much for chipping in. Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome, my friend. Yeah. For me, for me, it tends to recycle your body energies uh, down to your feet more efficiently. But no matter what sorts you've got, no matter what chemicals you've got in your body, everything has to be emitted from your body and your, your, from your from your feet eventually, and your toes. Yes. Yeah. And that that seems that seems to what it seems to do what you you know what I've just uh, explained. Yeah. Well, I suppose that your circulation is your healing energies, and if, it, if it's able to get to everywhere, then it's obviously going to heal. Well, uh, yeah. Without circulation, we're dead. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Fascinating. 
And I mean, I'll play devil's advocate just for one second, David. Uh, is there anything that you reckon may have uh, uh, helped your healing process other than the inclined bed therapy? Well, I've never, um, <clears throat> I've never drunk alcohol for about uh, four or five years now. I've never smoked. Um, well, put it this way: I, I smoked when I was about uh, thirty for about four years, and then I knocked, knocked it off. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's um, 40, 45, 45 years ago. <laughs> Effectively, what you've done is pretty maintained a healthy diet, if you like, and uh, yeah. clean bed therapy, and that's been it. In fact, when I when I stopped working offshore, I was I was over 15 stone in weight, and um, because of all the good food that they supply to you uh, on the meals offshore, um, and uh, I that 15 stone is now. Well, it's been down to about uh, 11 and a half stone uh, for the last 20 odd years. And I, I've just maintained that, that weight. And I, I enjoy me eating, yeah, like most people do. Um, I'm just, uh, I've got a, uh, a contact request for Terry. Uh, would you like to maybe uh, bring Terry in in a minute? Yes, please. Uh, Terry's daughter, Steve, took one of my experiments to school. Oh yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. and entered right. it into the, the um, oh, so, did you call it Terry? That's uh, like a science fair, was it? A science yeah. fair, right? Yes. Three, two, one. And We're live, guys. Welcome back to Awake Radio, folks. And I know at the start of the show, I never even mentioned any of the affiliates. So I'll give them a quick mention and I'll get Andrew to mention his website as well. So um, obviously Awake uh, US and Awake Australia and uh, uh, Turtle Island News, uh, she's at radio.com and uh, these changing times, uh, uh, People for People, which used to be Scottish Sovereigns, uh, United We Strike and... Uh, uh, Wolf Spirit Radio, Just Us Radio, and uh, I'm sure I've forgotten somebody, guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, wherever you're listening, whatever platform you're listening to, guys, I uh, hope you're finding the information uh, very valid and very useful. Um, you know, I understand that, that some subjects are not always the, the most interesting, uh, but certainly for me, this is an interesting subject. It's something that is very, very cheap. Uh, you know, it's not going to cost you a great deal of money and it's something, as Andrew said, is repeatable and, uh, you know, I think it's it's well worth having a go, to be honest. Um, so, Andrew, welcome back again. And, uh, Thank you, Stephen. And Terry, uh, as Terry has joined us from good old US of A, which uh, will please uh, a lot of our listeners. Hello, everyone. So, um, Terry, would you like to give us a little uh, introduction to your inclined bed therapy? I found the a website that talked about the inclined bed therapy, and I was new to multiple sclerosis, and I didn't hadn't taken any medication yet or anything like that for the multiple sclerosis, and I found this information, and I thought, huh. He wants somebody to try something new. I'll be happy to try that. Didn't didn't involve any needles or pain or medication, and it didn't cost me anything. Yeah, I was willing to give it a try. And I had pain in my left thigh it, all the time, and I thought, well, I, someone tried Betty Iams, a nice woman, I, I guess. I've never met her. But she suggested this therapy. She said it worked for her. And I, I give it a try. And I used some books underneath the frame of my bed and I thought, well I'll just give it a try he said six inches higher than your feet okay I can do math I can measure and so I put the books under my bed and slept that way one night and thought oh pain's gone my husband said I hate it and I said all right I'll take the books out so I slept flat again pain came back and I said couch is out there I'm sleeping with the bed up and we've done it ever since and that was back in 1998 <laughs> 
So I've been sleeping that way ever since. And my multiple sclerosis does not give me any trouble. I've never taken any drugs or anything injectable or anything cancer causing or cancer. Fa- I never take any drugs. Just, just the inclined bed has served me well since 1998. That's a good record. Um, I believe you had um, an interesting conversation with your neurologist. Yes. The neurologist recently told me that um, you don't really need to come back to see me again. You're better. I, I, I've never seen anybody get better. This is not a disease that's supposed to get better. He said, don't don't bother to come back. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I've never been happier to fire a doctor in my life. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, one thing I noticed with uh, with David and yourself that you've that's been sort of late nineties that you you've been doing the inclined bed therapy, so that's quite some time. Mhm. Did it did it take some? Uh, you know how how long did you find that it took for it to you got an initial response or a reaction um, with it? Do you have any idea? I had mine immediately. Right. Okay. Great. Because I had the pain and then it was gone and. That is how multiple sclerosis works. It, it comes and goes, but I had instant relief from the pain in my leg, and I had no reason to think that this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, since then, I've had amalgams removed from my teeth, and my not my neurologist, a different doctor said, I think you had mercury poisoning as well as your multiple sclerosis, and... So with the amalgams moved from my teeth, I think I've eliminated the mercury poisoning from my system, but I I still have had no troubles with the multiple sclerosis. And I tried sleeping flat. We had a vacation where I couldn't sleep and inclined, and, and I hated it. My husband said he hated it too, and even though he, on one hand, hates sliding down in the bed, on the other hand, he can't sleep flat now. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fireman, so occasionally he has to go to the fire station to sleep, and he doesn't sleep well there because it's too much trouble to bother to lift the bed up there. Mm-hmm. Although we just use PVC pipe and put it underneath the leg of the bed, and that that's how we raise our bed. The, the book thing didn't really work too well. So yeah, that's a PVC great idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We, I, depending on where I go, my family's got bricks for me to use, and say, that works for me. If I'm at their house, I have bricks and Whatever, I, I, I've gone on a mission trip to Trinidad and we took PVC pipe on the trip to Trinidad and I raised the bed there and had some rocks to help put underneath it. The, the PVC pipe seems to work really well. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's easy to cut and make it whatever length you want it to be. Mm, yeah. That sounds, uh, sounds a very simplistic way, yeah. yeah. I, I'm all about simple things. I'm blonde. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we have a question in the chat which uh, refers to the, the, the dust in the beds as well. Um, it's Clear Angel, and you mentioned uh, some similar about sliding down the bed. Clear Angel saying, if the bed is tilted that much, how does one stay on it without slipping to the end? Uh, my bed, is uh, I tilted four inches, and have and have had constantly to stop myself from going to the bottom of the mm-hmm. be- of the bed. What, what you can do there is to wrap um, an old duvet, or you know, if you've got a spare duvet or a blanket, wrap it tightly around the mattress. Then put your top sheet on, and that extra friction that you get you get from the uh, the duvet or the blanket uh, prevents the slipping. Ah, yeah. Yeah, very smart thinking that. <laughs> well, it, it's, these, these are these are some of the tips that the pe- many people have helped have uh, have handed over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, must... what, what Telly was saying about uh, an instant reaction. Um, another lady with um, she's an ex-nurse actually, and uh, she had a condition called psoriatic arthritis, and she would wake up every morning racked with pain, and she admitted to me. Um, a while back, quite a few years back, that she was ready for a wheelchair. Um, life for her was a real struggle. She'd immerse her hands in hot water to try and get her hands to move. And after about an hour and a half of pain, she'd be able to move her hands. And she ran a guest house at the time, so it was, it was a real struggle for her. And um, she tilted the bed. 
and she got up the next morning and she didn't need to immerse her hands in water, they worked. So that was from one night sleeping on an angle bed. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and to this date, and she's a very good friend of ours now, her psoriasis is completely gone. She has no more pain in her joints. You know, she can walk miles. It, it's, it's amazing. And another lady with, um, with psoriasis uh, took a series of photographs and we, we actually saw the changes in her skin and she went, went to virtually having no psoriasis with photographic evidence. It's absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, you know, you, you start to think, well, like I said at the start of this, who was the, the person that determined the whole human race should sleep flat when animals, animals <laughs> seldom sleep flat. You know, if you watch cows right. and sheep in a field and there's a hillside, they'll all be facing up the hill when they're lying down. You know, chimps sleep in trees and make, and those trees are not flat. Um, gorillas will lean up against the tree. You know, mm -hmm. even alligators, crocodiles and snake alter the posture. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't stay flat for long, you know. An alligator will raise, lower its head to cool its temperature and then raise its head um, to, to, to raise the temperature and so do lizards in an aquarium, in a, a vivarium. You know, so mm -hmm. and birds, but I mean many birds will sleep standing up. Some mm -hmm. horses will sleep standing up. I mean, effectively all I'd ever known about sort of that is, you know, sleeping... As if you're camping on that, uh, if you can't, don't sleep with your head down the slope, because you're, right. <laughs> you know, because you, your head fills up with, with water, if you like, uh, and goes like a balloon. So that was the only thing I ever, I ever clocked about that. So yeah, I, I had some feedback from people that camp out a lot, and they say that if they try and pitch the tent so that there's a slight incline, and they actually feel warmer, um, mm -hmm. which, which you know, is another thing that we found that the sloping bed increases your metabolism so if you suffer with cold hands and cold feet uh, all of a sudden you get nice warm hands and nice warm feet in bed which indicates your circulation's improved and your metabolism is improved my granddaughter is she's three now but since she has been born she's had trouble with reflux acid reflux and in babies that's not fun because all they do is cry and my daughter's the one that did Andrew's study, and we tried to do the circulation thing and the science fair thing. And, and so my daughter understands his theory, and she was quick to put um, a block or something underneath her crib to make sure that she's inclined, and that helped her acid reflux tremendously. Brilliant. And my husband also suffers from acid reflux, so with our bed up, he doesn't have that problem anymore. <laughs> so, We're and it's interesting, my great-grandmother slept with her bed inclined and I, I'm, I'm guessing that she had an acid problem and it helped her stomach but as when I was four years old and I'm 51 now um, she was sleeping with her bed inclined and we didn't know anything about Andrew's study then so it must have been something that people do yes and uh, you know somewhere along the line somebody had the idea that we should sleep with the head of our bed up so that our tummies don't hurt Yes, and the medical profession will also use it for respiratory failure. You know, they mm -hmm. they'll, they'll raise people's beds at the head end, but they generally sit people up, and that's not the same mm -hmm. as an inclined bed. A lot of no. people think being sat up in bed is the same. You know, oh, I've got lots of pillars. You know, so I'm already doing it. No, you're not. <laughs> you're, if you're sitting happen. up, you're, you're actually preventing yourself from lying on your sides comfortably. So you're always going to be lying on your back. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's not good, being in the same position every night. You need to be able to rotate. That, that was actually a question I, uh, I meant to ask you. Uh, does it matter about lying on your side, on your back, or, or whatever? Oh, not, at all, not at all. On, on your back is probably the worst for, for oxygenation. Um, right. On your side is going to be better. And, in fact, there's some research that prone position, lying on your your tummy actually increases the, uh, the effectiveness of the lungs, which is a little bit disturbing when, you know, mothers are told to put the babies <laughs> flat on the right. backs. Yeah? yeah. Right, yeah. Then, well, they switch that up every now and again. Sometimes now the, the current thing is on the side. 
Yes. My granddaughters were told to be on your side. That's interesting. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> In fact, I, I had a meeting with uh, Dr. Shireen Chandler from the Foundation for Sudden Infant Death at her home in London. And she saw my experiment, she heard my explanation. She turned around to me, looked me in the face and said, my God, you've solved it. I said, what mm -hmm. do you mean by that? She said, you've solved sudden infant death syndrome. That's right. <laughs> and I said, so we can now tell mothers and, and, you know, and fathers to put the babies on an angle? Oh no, it's not that simple. Yeah, of course it is. Well, of course it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, in fact, there's a, a new movement called Kangaroo Baby Care, where mm -hmm. uh, the parents never put the babies flat down in the bed. They have them uh, um, up against the cells. Mm -hmm. um, they take it in turns. The husband picks the baby up. The mother picks the baby up. And they don't put that baby down. No. I, I couldn't do that forever, but <laughs> no. at some point you got to put the baby down. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, but for short periods of time, I should imagine it's okay. Mm -hmm. But but it's not okay to leave a baby flat for all those hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting that my daughter, who did the experiment, realized that, yep, that's what she wants to do with her baby. Fantastic. Um. Oh, there was an interesting one with um, human fertility. Um, a friend, a member of the family, a lady, was having a tro uh, trouble with uh, IVF, in vitro fertilization. And she'd spent a fortune and she couldn't uh, conceive. And uh, she gave up. So I convinced her to put the bed on an angle. And without IVF, she had a baby. Mm-hmm. Which Congratulations. Is, well, it's fascinating. And then if we look at um, in, um, in space travel, they've actually uh, observed the way um, sperm swims and it loses, it loses its motility when it's, when it's in zero and micro, or microgravity. So they're saying now, the latest buzz is that long-term space flight would, would actually or could actually make some people sterile. Mm. Didn't you say, Andrew, that there was someone that had a significant improvement that was quadriplegic, yeah. paraplegic yes. that could walk again? Yes, um, that was John uh, John Cohen. Um He was um, well, was a fantastic guy. Um, he's passed away, John, as he, he died. Seven, I think he was seventy-six years of age. Um, he had trouble with his uh, his medication. I won't go into the details, but it was not related to the sloping bed. And um, he uh, was paralysed for uh, ten and a half years, I think it was. And um, he was actually filmed by Cotton Television News. Uh, he he was he got out of his wheelchair and he walked on Cotton Television News, and you could see you could see his feet moving correctly and his knees lifting and. It was incredible. He walked between two parallel bars um, and he walked to the one end of the bars, which I had I'd assembled the bars for him as his own, and turned around and walked back in front of the cameras. And I always remember Tim Onadal saying, uh, he was the news reporter, he said, this is one of those days you'll always remember where you were. He says, mm -hmm. absolute pleasure watching this. He says, seeing you working with these people. Incredible. And the camera. How had, long did how long did it take him to sleep incline before he could do that? Oh, I forget. I haven't got the notes the notes with me now. But it, it, it took quite a while. It, you know, it probably took over a year. Um, but the, I was trying to remember. I read it. I think it was maybe about a year. Yeah, but the, the, see, John John was not by any means the first. In fact, I've just uploaded the case histories onto the website at http colon forward slash forward slash incline bed therapy dot com and um, I, there's under my research tab on the main menu the top menu uh, you'll see the, uh, the spinal cord injury case histories that I've uploaded and uh, the first two uh, Julian Bowstead and, and John Mason um, both complete spinal cord injuries and incredible results with, with both of these guys you know so and that then led led on to uh, helping more people with spinal cord injuries. 
but I, I tried on the, the CARE-CURE forum to introduce the, uh, um, the theory and um, many people there were shooting me down in flames but a few people um, decided to give it a try and, and when they come back and started to report that they were improving also uh, they were also ridiculed and chased off the and chased off the website, and they'd been there for years. You know, friends of these people, and some even accused me of inventing these people. So to do that, I would have had to have gone there four or five <laughs> or six years before, and and spent months and months and months of, of posts to different people on the pretext of trying to introduce somebody that's showing us this. It was ridiculous. It was absolute. But they would rather believe that. Then putting two blocks of wood under the head of the bed could outsmart the people involved in spinal cord research. Well, in reality, I can understand that because I must admit, when I first seen uh, your show with uh, Clive De Caro, it was something that, and and I, and I do actually praise myself for keeping an open mind. But when I seen it, I thought that would not really be worth watching. And uh, you know, but when it did, it uh, didn't have hit me right between the eyes. as saying, uh, you know. You shouldn't rule anything out. You should have a look and, and see and can become informed, I think. Yeah, and never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and the best part about this whole thing is no one's making any money on it, which is unfortunate for Andrew, but um, no one's making any money on it, and this is something you can try, and if you don't like it, don't do it, but it doesn't hurt. Give it a try. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. It, it doesn't harm you to try it in the least, and, and you might discover something that you didn't even expect. I mean, one of the best things about it is it's made my nails better than they were before. I mean, really? I mean, I'm a woman. That matters to me, but something silly like that. I mean, your hair, your nails, it's improving because you're circulating all those minerals yes. in your system. Yes, it did pay, Terry. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had sciatica of the nerve and things like that, and um, and uh, I found the, the nails were actually stronger and they were, they were actually growing faster. That's right. Right. Yeah. I, was, I also was walking, uh, I was using a walking stick for four years as well. Um, and I was constantly falling over. I, I had all the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, but I refused to uh, go to the doctor because I knew he'd only give me a bucket full of pills anyway. The, the best case so far was a girl with cerebral palsy. Um, she's, uh, well, she was 12 years of age. And the parents called me and asked me about the bull terrier. And the question was, what would a male bull terrier be like around a severely disabled child? I said, what's the matter with your kid? She said, why do you want to know? I said, I might be able to help. She said, don't be bloody ridiculous. She said, I rang for, a, <laughs> I rang for information about a dog. She said, I've been halfway around the world. Nobody can help my daughter. I said, look, I can't make you listen. She said, well, spit it out then. So I, I, I told her all about my research and how I'd been helping people with multiple sclerosis and people with spinal cord injury. And it might just work with, with, a, um, with, a, with a, a, a child with cerebral palsy. And by now she told me that uh, her daughter had CP and uh, to the age of 12 and never walked. And she wore calipers day times and night times to keep her legs straight. She had no muscles on her legs, very frail. And um, they tilted the bed. And it, it took quite a few months. I think it was about eight months, probably longer. And the school rang up and said that uh, this little girl had got out of a wheelchair and walked at school. That's the first time in, <laughs> first time in wow. 12 years. And... Um, Wow. It, it was quite a few months later, this, this girl actually called me up and uh, I picked the phone up and she said, are you Andrew? I said, yes. She said, I'm the little girl that you've been helping. I've just called wow. her to say thank you for all you've done for me. Do you know my legs went to jelly and I collapsed on the floor. I couldn't even stand up. Oh my. I was, I was absolutely incredible. I was going to say that to you earlier on. It, it must give you such a heartwarming feeling when you see these people recovering. It's good. It's it's good, Steve, because, I mean, it, it, like you say, it, it, it's good for the soul. You know, you, you not that I, I believe, I'm not religious at all in any way. Um, but it, 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 
if I had my time over again, I'd do it all over again. You know, mm-hmm. because, hey, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't wait for the doctors to come round and do it because there's no money in it. The yeah, psychics right. are not going to do it because there's no money in it. You know, so, and look, don't even get me started on the governments. <laughs> <laughs> But even bed makers don't make beds like that well, because they, they fun, no money here. Funnily, <laughs> you, see, you, you set, now you hit the nail on the head because uh, in the early days I used to make, we used to have beds made by uh, silent night beds and they said they had to stop. I said, why, why have you got to stop making them? They said, well, it's casting a lot of doubt on the beds we make. <laughs> you know, yeah. and we can't really we can't really help you out with the advertising because we'd be shooting ourselves <laughs> in the foot. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So that was the end of that relationship. Yeah, and in fact, it had already helped the uh, the chief executive's uh, personal secretary, who had MS. Um, unbeknown to me, they'd made an inclined bed for her, and uh, she, she showed remarkable improvements too. <laughs> Yeah. And you certainly made my bed. Hi. Oh, Hello, sir. Hi, Donald. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, my friend. Uh, Terry, I just want to say you are great. <laughs> well, thank you. Why? <laughs> oh, just you just really hit the nail on the heads with these things, and uh, it's just really great to hear the input. Well, I I like what he's done for us. <laughs> yeah. It's just incredible, and uh, Andrew, thanks for having us on, Steve. Andrew, didn't you say that sl- sitting in a wheelchair is a horrendous thing to, to yes. make people do? That wheelchair. If you've got this disease anyway, why would you sit in a wheelchair all day? Yeah, wheelchair posture is really wrong. You know, bucket seat posture with your knees higher than your seat. Um, that's going to compromise circulation down through your body, together with the pressure that you've got on your buttocks, yeah? Definitely a no-no. And in fact, um, I took the main boardroom at Jaguar, Jaguar Cars, um, and they said normally 20 minutes would uh, would suffice and people would start walking out of the room with these directors, high-ranking directors. But the talk was about how car seats are making people fall asleep at the wheel uh, because of <laughs> bad posture. I said it, it, I actually referred to it as wheelchair posture. And... Um, that talk in the Jaguar cars lasted two hours and I captivated everyone. Not one person left the room. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they said they couldn't do anything about the uh, the car seating because of design constraints of the vehicles. Um, what the, whatever that means, I haven't been able to work that out yet. So, Donald, how has Inkland yes. Bed Therapy done for you? Oh, it's done really well, Andrew. And I... Uh... I'm actually uh, lying here on my inclined uh, sofa uh, <laughs> watching my computer. <laughs> I won't give this incline up for anything. Uh, so, uh, Steve, you would ask people how they'd gotten on to this thing. Uh, yeah, I um, was actually trying to uh, do the exact opposite of uh, what Andrew suggests. I had been to the doctor a couple of years ago, um, and... Uh, she told me that I was, um, she thought I was getting um, heart disease or atherosclerosis and wanted to put me on uh, the medications that are going around for that. And I didn't want any part of that. So I um, had remembered I had rented a home one time where the bed was actually inclined at the foot end by a couple of inches and thought that I was getting some relief from that. So I went on the internet to see if something like that might help me. The unfortunate thing about doing research on the internet is I can find anything to corroborate any theory I can come up with. (laughs) So um, I try to discipline myself to find anything that corroborates the opposite. Well, um, I bumped into uh, some of the stuff Andrew had written up uh, talking about how we're supposed to sleep the exact opposite way. And I thought, oh, what is this? And I started to read into it. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this guy's really gone into a lot of detail. So. I had read the recommendations to raise the head end of my bed, um, starting out with a few inches. Well, I couldn't wait. I think I, I inclined about four inches, and before bedtime, I already had it up to six or seven. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. the, That's where uh, you belong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, Jerry. Well, the, um, the doctor had actually told me uh, earlier that day that she uh, wasn't getting any pulse in my right foot. 
And I had an eye stroke about six months earlier, and she said, oh, my God, this is your, your arteries are hardening. Um, and that, this is why she wanted to put me on the statins. Well, that night, I could feel the blood flow tunneling through whatever blockage I was experiencing in my right foot. <laughs> then my wow. eyesight started to get better uh, during a time that I had actually managed to quit smoking for a little bit. I haven't managed to conquer that one yet, but boy, I just felt so much better. Probably uh, the thing that most people could identify with in my story are the unexpected benefits, as, as so many of us have had other benefits. I had a garden uh, where I worked that had about 700 petunia plants, and I would squat every year to plant these. And I wouldn't get done with the planting before I was having terrible lower uh, back pain. Sometimes I would have to take a full minute just to stand up straight. The fall, that winter, I started uh, sleeping inclined um, with the bed up, the head end up six inches and the feet down. The following spring, I planted 1,300 petunia plants, oh, not wow. one episode of back pain at all. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. My mother, who is uh, now 84 uh, years, I'm sorry, 81. Uh, this is a couple of years ago now that I started this, and I was talking to her about it. And oh, I think anybody who's tried to become an inclined bed therapy evangelist has run into this. I mean, people think I am a kook. It's almost mm -hmm. like I got a reputation yeah. for it, like, you know. <laughs> So um, anyway, uh, that's okay, because the couple of people that have tried it and benefited makes it all worthwhile. And uh, hearing from people on this show also um, uh, is really great. And uh, I told my mother about this, and so she tried it. And then, as always, all the benefits are always preceded by a little discomfort, sort of like going to the gym and working out. And then all of a sudden there's a benefit. My mother was all set to put it back down. She was having pain in her back from this after about six days. And then on the seventh day, she uh, came out of the shower in the morning, sat down to clip her toenails and said, oh, my goodness, I was able to lift my left foot up onto my right knee without having to use my hands. Oh, wow. <laughs> I haven't been able to do that in five years. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's telling me that her balance has increased tremendously. Um, and so then now I'm starting to do my own offshoot, you know, quasi uh, enthusiast research i'm looking up on you know how blood circulation affects the vestibular and all you know all there's so many directions we can go with it anyway i tend to be long-winded that's my story <laughs> brilliant thank you very much donald sure and uh, you know, we didn't hear where does donald live oh i'm in um new haven connecticut terry yeah, also I, in the United States, okay. Yeah, and, and another Yankee here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Ohio. <laughs> uh, uh, you're among you're in among friends. Uh, we, yes, yes. Yeah, we have a lot of American listeners and a lot of American hosts and so especially First Nations uh, people. So, uh, yeah, we, the way we look at it awake is that, you know, all races, cultures, religions, we all got to come together and share this kind of knowledge uh, because certainly... The powers that be, that we'll call them, uh, certainly don't want us to be healthy, it would appear. Mm. Well, the government doesn't want us healthy. Yeah. What, what interest? Well, it's a sickness industry. Mm -hmm. If we're all well, <laughs> they're out of business. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Did, did you say how long you had been doing uh, the, the therapy, Donald? I may have um, let's see. I when did I first contact you, Andrew? About two years ago. Yeah, it's been about two. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of I fact. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I only discovered it recently, Terry. Uh, I I couldn't believe when I discovered it about two and a half two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, Andrew had been working on this since like the 1990s, and I was just like, oh my God, where have I been? Uh, but yeah. So anyway, it's been about two and a half years. Yeah. I said I've been doing this since '98, so. Wow. Well, it would certainly seem, you know, there is initial, uh, initial effects that can be quite uh, positive, and uh, obviously over the long term, uh, you know, you've got. I think you have to be patient with it. I think. 
Yes, the, fir exactly. the first two weeks can be problematic for some people. Um, as Donald says, it feels like you've been working out in the gym gymnasium. Your muscles are aching. You can get a stiff neck. Yeah, I remember. I remember getting a stiff neck. Um, but I also remember uh, one of the days I was walking. Well, we took the took the lads down to the beach, and um, my lads had skateboards, and I had a ball terrier pulling them up and down the the beach. Um, and I was running in front, shouting the dog. <laughs> And the dog was a big, powerful dog, was pulling the, the, the lads along at a tremendous speed. And then the dog would be falling about the floor, you know, he's, he's completely done in. And I got back and I said, oh, the poor dog. And, and I always remember Jude saying, how come you're not out of breath? Why have you done all this and you're not out of breath? And another thing we noticed was if we walked up the hills, you know, we'd, we'd normally ache and you got bagfuls of shopping and you pull over and stop. But we, we were able to carry on without stopping. So, you know, the, the benefits are, you know, quite, quite remarkable. Yeah, when I was first diagnosed in 98, I had a great deal of difficulty walking for any length of time. And, and I thought for sure I was going to follow along the normal progression with multiple sclerosis of getting worse, worse, worse. And, and since I started this right away, when I was diagnosed, I am impressed that I've gotten better, better, better. And it, it's constantly gotten better, better. It's never gotten, I've never had a huge setback that put me back further than I started. So mm. that, that, that's quite impressive because anyone that knows anything about multiple sclerosis is it generally doesn't take any prisoners. It's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, in the, in the initial study, um, we, we, we had two, two ladies and two ophthalmologists. This was the pilot study before Terry joined, uh, the first pilot study. And um, two, two ladies, uh, ophthalmologists, wrote to me and said, could you explain to me how putting two blocks of wood under, under a bed could restore someone's sight? And I had to go down and explain what had happened. And they were fascinated. It, it sure did mine. <laughs> You know, Steve, uh, there was one benefit that um, I'll, I'll take a risk on saying here on uh, radio is um, anybody with erectile dysfunction can get benefits from this. That's true as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, when I um, – oh, gee, how can I put this as acceptable on radio? Well, let, let me just say that uh, one time um, – the woman I was seeing at the time said, you know, I am really impressed with what this has accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm going to get a T-shirt with that printed on it. Yeah, well, you know, this could almost be a, a test for um, uh, Grenada Steve's radio listening audience. Uh, we all remember how the um, sales of uh, Viagra just took off to the point that they had to redouble and triple their forecasts when they first came out. Well, now let's su suddenly find out if everybody starts sleeping on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. As long as it works, that's all good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, well put, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. yeah so, so uh, you know, all I can say is if you get a ton of uh, uh, listenership out of this starting um, in the next five minutes to – yeah. You know, if, 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 there's, if, there's, if there's any profit generated from this, do something to promote what Andrew's done. Because, I mean, they, just the number of people that have been helped, uh, I, I can't imagine that Andrew doesn't feel like the richest man in the world sometimes. I do. I do. Uh, not, not to say that there isn't a price that comes along with that. He gets a lot of other people's, you know, writing and stuff saying he's a kook. But they're all people who haven't tried it. Yes. I have yet to hear from one person who has really given this a good try who says that it's nuts. Yeah. Not, not one. I know. I've been, I've been using it for the last uh, 18 years at least. I live in Yorkshire. England, uh -huh. and I had ma major pro spine problems after working offshore as an engineer, uh, and uh, I was using a walking stick for over four years uh, as I was constantly falling over, very, very similar to, to MS symptoms, but I, I refused to go to the doctor after I found Andrew. Yes. 
Um, one thing, one thing that, that I will say for your listeners is inclined bed therapy is the cure for migraines. The last mm-hmm. one I had was in 1994. Right. I quite believe that. Yes. And I have now, another lady now has just joined us who suffers with terrible migraines. And I asked her the other day, I said, how many migraines have you had since? She said, none. So that's another load of pills that need to go in the bin, yeah. That don't work, incidentally. In the middle of the night. Yeah. And someone else had also indicated that that was her main thing that she was trying it for, and it helped tremendously. Fewer times you had to get up in the night. That's right. Nighttime urination, yes. But also bedwetting with, with anybody that's having problems with the youngsters, bedwetting, um, tilt the bed. You know, I've had lots and lots of reports back saying it stops instantly. And again, that's down to the two degree temperature drop. When you're lying on a flat bed, that means your body temperature drops, so you feel cold. And when you feel cold, you need to pee. Yeah, so if you're asleep, unfortunately, you get, that's when you get an accident. Mm-hmm. But if your body temperature's not dropping, uh, there's, not, there's no need to, well, you don't get the urge. And I think it was the uh, lady that got me to start with it, Betty, is the person that suggested that she had fewer reasons to have to get up in the night, and she, she appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the, one of the first uh, reports that you get back in. And another one was uh, a lady with osteoporosis, a lady called uh, Ruby Tate, and she, she actually appeared on the local television, although I've lost the original broadcast. Um, it was on a videotape that got destroyed. Um, but she, when, she, when I met the lady, she had answered a little advert in the newspaper, and this was before I had the internet, and it just said, looking for volunteers to sleep with the head of the bed raised six inches. And that's all I put, yeah, because that's all I could afford in the adverts. <laughs> and um, she, she come back to me and she, she, um, she contacted me and she said she couldn't believe the differences. Um, again, she was racked with pain. If she needed to turn around, she'd have to turn her whole body around because her body was um, seizing up. Um, she couldn't drive a car because she couldn't look in the mirror. Uh, she couldn't turn over in bed because she was in agony. Tilted the bed and all those problems just vanished. You know, she got full movement of her body, her spine, her neck. She was able to drive again. She could turn over in bed. She could clothe herself, dress herself, put a bra on. None of these things she could achieve. And her husband, uh, Harry, Harry, well, a part, sorry, he wasn't her husband. It was a partner called Harry. Um, he had um, a subtuate, what they call a subtuating scar on his arm, and uh, it had been there for well, 30 years. It healed up. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Have you had any contact with people with diabetes and how this affects oh, them? Oh yes, good point, Terry. Uh, yes, a lot of uh, a lot of um, reports back from people with diabetes. Um, gentleman um, over in Brixham, we found that his blood sugar levels have uh, becoming more normal, and um, his insulin has dropped you know, well, it's quite quite dramatically. Uh, he's on about a, a quarter of the normal insulin dose that he was on before he tilted the tilted the bed, and uh, he had a bleed behind his eye, and he was told he needed uh, surgery. So this, this is laser surgery, and the bleed stopped. Uh, they were mystified by what, what had happened. And then he moved mm-hmm. over to Canada for a little while uh, on a holiday, long holiday. And um, he slept flat, and his eye started to bleed again, the back of his eye. But when he got back oh, to the UK, it stopped again, because he was on his sleeping bed. But his, uh, interestingly enough, his wife... Uh, has got uh, type 1 diabetes caused through, uh, um, um, oh, what's the name of the steroid? I um, can't think of the name of the steroid. Uh, pred- prednisolone, um, was, she was overdosed on prednisolone. She didn't even know what she was taking. And mm-hmm. uh, it destroyed her pancreas, and they were told it would never work again. And um, lo and behold, she's now starting to produce her own insulin again. So her wow. insulin dose is dropping which is fantastic, 
but the icing on the cake for diabetes is a guy called Tateki Yi Ting, um, who's a doctor over in uh, Pohnpei Island, P O H N P E I Island. And with the help of the government there and the doctors and the, the local hospital and the college, they conducted a study with a, a group of patients with um, a diabetes and they tilted the beds and right across the board they listed a, a whole a number of uh, other complaints they had and um, all of the sugar levels had dropped, all but two had gone in the opposite direction. So um, being a wow. lateral thinker himself, he investigated why these two had gone in the wrong direction and both of them admitted they hadn't been sleeping on an inclined bed and that they'd been, <laughs> one had been binging out at a, at, a, at a wedding and another one had been binging out for two days at a funeral. But when they went back to the inclined bed, their blood sugar levels come down as well, quite significantly. So this is really important and I've always maintained as well that these rows of poor people in the hospitals that are having limbs amputated through gangrene. This could be stopped, you know, totally unnecessary. If, if, if you know, if they, they modified their beds, I'm sure that many of those amputations would be averted. They don't even have to change their eating habits as much as their sleeping habits. Well, yes, yes, yes. But the, the Americans introduced their diet to the Pompeii Island. Uh, they were okay when they had that their own. When they, when they had their own native, when they had their own native diet, they were very healthy indeed. And unfortunately, the American way has got the better of them. <laughs> My condolences to them. There was a child locally with an enlarged dysfunction in pituitary gland, um, who uh, had quite well, quite severe paralysis. And um, I met this lady who, who was at a party and she had her head head down, looking all depressed. So I asked her whatever the matter was, and. and uh, she told me all about her son and she tilted the bed and a, a, a year later I was at another party and this lady kept looking at me strange and I thought well you know something going on here and she come over in front of my wife and put her arms around me and said it, it worked by now I'd forgotten all about who it was Wow! and she said it worked but my son's working out down the gymnasium He's got the use of his arms, his hands, and his legs back. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's rather strange. I'm bringing Rubik on into the call just now, and I'll try and get uh, Avelina in, into the call if I can. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. You can hear ah, you. Though. Good. Are you still there? Have you, yes. Have you tried there. the inclined bed therapy? Yes, I have. Yes, I've been doing it for six years now. Wow. Um, I had terrible stomach problems for for, for a number of years and uh, went to the doctor, but unfortunately the tablets that uh, I was given had many side effects. Um, of course they do. <laughs> yes, of course. So one of, them, one of them, unfortunately, was breast enlargement and... Uh, being a, a small lady, oh, that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> being a small lady, I didn't want to have a, uh, you know, a sort of a, an overtoppling problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I, I came off those and well, didn't know what to do really, and found Andrew's uh, um, inclined bed therapy and thought I'd give it a try. Um, my husband made the bed, and I can safely say within two or three days I had no more stomach problems. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so um, I'm a great advocate of inclined bed therapy. I mean, not only that, but I, I, I find I'm more refreshed in the morning. Uh, I sleep better. Uh, I get over things quicker, you know, illnesses. Um, I'm less thirsty in the morning, um, and it's a great mood lifter. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, yeah. Um, Did you say your husband was reluctant to, to try it? Are you fine? Hang on, let me just turn the volume up so I can hear you better. Is Did you say your, your partner wanted to try it? Is that David? Yes, it is. Hello, <laughs> David. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes, we're getting round to it. Um, we sleep uh, in separate beds. Um, First yeah. 
I like to sleep separately. I like, I like to say good night's sleep. But yes, yeah, so we are working on that, David. At some point, we are going to, um, you know, order the wood. And when we've got some money, order some wood at the end of the year. And uh, my husband will make um, an inclined bed for himself. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for, for uh, chipping in. Very interesting. Um, what 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 the inner side stomach problems? What were the stomach problems with the uh, acid reflux? Yes, that's right. Um, I mean, you know, it's so debilitating all day finding whatever you eat. You know, you you just feel you've got this terrible heartburn and, and you know and acid reflux and all, you know all related stomach problems etc. Um, it didn't matter what I did. Um, in, uh, Let's just say that obviously other things have helped too since then, but the first thing that helped was the inclined bed therapy. Right. From, yeah, from there I was able to take things further, you know, change diet eventually, etc. Um, other things, but to start off to have that, not have to take the tablets and have a natural um, replacement for that, you know, was really important to me. I don't like taking tablets, so, you know, having a natural... I was stuck in Zantac. They, they, yeah. They're just an, I hate having to take those. Oh yeah, well exactly. I mean, it's just I, I'm not I'm not a person for taking tablets, so I really didn't resent it taking anything that could give me any side effects. So it was lovely, really great to have that, you know, that feeling of ah, oh, you know, I've got some relief with the inclined bed therapy, and then from then on I could make changes. Um, so you know, I've I've stayed inclined, and what I, I suppose I want to say to people is to try it and stay on it. Don't come off it when your symptoms have ceased, when you feel, feel that things have changed. I know a lot of you know people have said, oh, I, I tried it and it was really great. But then, of course, I went back to sleeping flat. But I think that's a disaster. <laughs> Why would they um, do that? Yeah, well, well, people, I suppose people sleep in bed with, with other partners and perhaps, you know, there's been problems there. And, um, so I said there's but, a couch. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's right. But I yes. understand. I can understand, but, you know, I, I suppose that's what I want to say, really, is, you know, stay with it. If you're going to do inclined bed therapy, don't don't give up after a couple of months. Stay with it. Yeah. It's interesting that yeah. you were talking about people that were on it that uh, got away, because I, I can't get away. I, when I went away to uh, my sister's place in Vermont and I had to sleep flat, I, I thought that I was going to die in my yeah, sleep. Absolutely. Uh, you do feel that you're, you feel suffocating, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I also want to tell you something something great that happened too because I live on a small island there's only 57 of us um, and three people here also sleep inclined um, one particular man but they're all elderly but one of them had a, a very bad varicose vein in his leg for years he had this varicose vein um, I would say it was in three or four days this varicose vein disappeared after sleeping inclined <laughs> Wow, which is which fantastic, it. isn't it? It is fantastic. That's beautiful. Yeah, and he stayed. He stayed. I'm mean, like, I, you know, I always said, "Who's still inclined?" He goes, "Oh yes." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another guy um, also had a, a very bad neck problem, and um, there's, there's no, you know, nobody sorted out. No therapist managed to sort it out, and he was, you know, suffering with this neck problem. So I, you know, obviously mentioned to him, and he said, oh, "I'll give it a try." And and again, um, that was within, a, you know, literally within a week. It, it, he said, I just can't believe it. He said, you know, what doctors couldn't fix, sleeping so simply, it's fixed. He, yeah. said, I'm telling, he said, I'm telling everyone, I'm telling everyone, I'm driving people mad. I'm telling them, you know, what's... He's <laughs> <laughs> <It's laughs> an inclined bed bore, like the rest yeah. of us, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, <laughs> it that's is a, right. It is amazing some of the immediate benefits. A lot of them take a lot longer, but my girlfriend had remarked immediately that my my snoring had almost been eliminated. Oh, yeah. Then. Yeah, I, snoring is I, great. <laughs> I told my cousin about that, and suddenly um, her and her husband were sleeping in the same bed again now and I, yeah, uh, because yeah. it eliminated his snoring. And then I, I called Andrew and told him about this, and he said, oh, yeah, inclined bed therapy has saved many marriages. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Fantastic, isn't it? Yes. It's a benefit uh, which is do not expect, isn't it? So I get they, no, I didn't expect the snoring to improve, and it did. And then a friend of mine is getting a lot of treatment right now from specialists for sleep apnea. I had heard yeah. through his yeah. co-worker. So I left him a note saying, I have the solution for that, and it's absolutely free. 
He never called and, me. And <laughs> it's not the least bit it difficult does. to uh, deal with a mask or anything over your head while you're sleeping. Yeah, and he that's what he's doing right now is dealing with the mask and everything rather than a call to, to a, you know, like some crazy guy who sleeps at the same tilt that we all automatically pick when we go to the beach. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, I know one guy, he moved from down to the uh, Virginia coast from here because he he said he always sleeps so much better at the beach. I didn't want to break his heart. I said, guess what? It's not the sun that's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same when you go camping, isn't it? Yes. You know, if you find yourself on a, a slight incline, you don't you don't realize how refreshed you feel from it. It's funny. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've had other people... Yeah. I was just going to say, I know other people that go camping that report the same thing that you just said. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we can do it all right in our own homes. <laughs> yes. For no cost. <laughs> isn't it, exactly. Isn't it interesting how, how resistant people are to trying it, though? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to lose popularity real quick. Uh, <laughs> Mention it. <laughs> I've had friends defriend me from Facebook for bringing it up. <laughs> Um, I'm really sorry to say this, folks, but we've got about five more minutes. Okay. So, um, maybe we'll give uh, each one of you a minute or so uh, to maybe say your websites and, and, and so on and your last part and words. But uh, I think it's, uh, for me, I would love for you guys to come back again and uh, tell us a little more of your experience. I don't think we've covered it enough by far. No, it's a long subject, but, you know... It, where do you stop? You know, it, 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 it just goes on and on and on. 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't, didn't, yeah, no uh, I had guys for volunteers with sleeping clients on their space project. So and we're offering so, $7,000. Oh, NASA. Uh, yeah, 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 you've got space research as well. Um, we covered that in, in, the, in the first part of the show. But they, they, yeah, they, they, they're paying people seventeen thousand dollars to stay in bed for three months, and the bed's sl uh, slanted down, head down, feet up. Yeah, yeah. But they, they're studying this because of, um, you know, what happens to astronauts in space because it ages ten times faster when you take gravity away. So they come up with a great idea: we'll put people in bed and we'll we'll recreate the uh, the ten times aging. Uh, process and, and give them 17 grand to keep the mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, you know, it, it has been an amazing, an amazing adventure. And all because we tried to understand how water got to the top of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> um, Terry, do you have any parting words? I, I am just so thrilled that uh, Andrew can share this all with us and he did all the research and we just get all the benefits. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a nice fellow, isn't he? I think we've all done he's research. Amazing. I wouldn't have been able to do anything if it wasn't for people like Terry and David and, and Donald and Rubicon and and now you, Steve, you're, you're experimenting as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'll show my way on another occasion and let you know how I'm getting on now. I'm very much... <coughs> In the early stages of it, as you know, yeah. uh, I have problems getting into the bed uh, to, to sleep. So but whenever I can get into the bed, I'm finding that I'm sleeping really solid. And uh -huh. my feet are, 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 the swelling's reduced. Uh, but of course, when I get up, then it starts uh, filling up my feet again. But um, early days for me, uh, it's, it's, I really haven't given it a good enough shot yet. So, But I will come back to you and let you know. Great. What, what I would like to say to your, your listeners is if you do do this, is to please keep a journal. Um, I have a template on the, um, the inclinebedtherapy.com forum, and I'll be modifying that template and putting it under my research tab. And uh, you can download this and use it to record the changes. There's also a document called um, Things to Monitor, which I've uploaded to the website. It sort of outlines the, uh, the parameters of, of the, of the uh, research. So highlight some things that you can uh, look for that you wouldn't normally look for, like half moons on the fingers, um, mm -hmm. f fingernails growing stronger, um, smoother, hair growing faster, you know, 
um, people that have hair falling out suddenly find that the hair is not falling out. Old scar tissue seems to vanish as well. I have a huge scar down my leg from barbed wire and uh, that's all filled in nicely, it's hardly visible. And it, that, that groove had been in my leg for, well, um, since I was about 18 or 19. Yeah, so uh, again, if you keep a journal and, and jot down anything, or record any, any photograph evidence of varicose veins, photograph evidence of edema, um, skin conditions such as psoriasis, or even make a, a video diary, all of this will help to reach many more people. Well, I really hope that we can help you uh, do that and get, out, get the word out there. I mean, I, I really do think you're on to something. Uh, and, I mean, simple, simple thing uh, like raising your bed six inches. Uh, I think it's remarkable what you've done already. Uh, and I really do think you're, you're on to a good thing. And anything we can do to help uh, promote you and, and the inclined bed therapy, we shall be trying our best. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, would you like to give it your, your website and that again or any relevant information? Yeah, we have a Facebook account as well, which is, um, again, Inclined Bed Therapy uh, group and the page. And the website is inclinebedtherapy.com. Cool, cool. Well, I'm reluctant to, to end the show, folks, but we've got about four minutes and uh, our next host will be here very, very shortly. And have to That's go okay. I'd like um, to say a big thanks to the people that have come in and and, uh, and share their own experience. You know, this adds a lot more weight than, than me or you, Steve, just talking about this. You know, these are real people, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of you helping me. Thank you very much. Well, yes. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah, that, I'm so glad I could be of help. Well, that, that thanks comes from me as well. I, I really do appreciate you. Uh, you know, given your experiences, as, he, as Andrew is saying, there's nothing like word of mouth, you know. This is the first time that I've been able to talk about inclined bed therapy this long without people trying to change the subject to something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we may well have you back on again because uh, I think we'll, Andrew was talking about doing a, uh, a show in a few weeks or something like that when we've got a bit of, uh, there's people on my end that are trying inclined bed therapy, so... Uh, but certainly we'll try and work something. Uh, this will be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it needs to, it needs to be about four weeks minimum, Steve. Pro probably even longer. Ah, I see. Yeah. Uh, probably even a couple of months um, mm -hmm. before you'll see the full effects. You know, sure. for example, if you wanted to ask somebody whether they've had a migraine um, in 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 two months, and how many migraines would they have had in those two months before the bed was raised? Of course, you know, of course. And, and how have the kids performed? You know, have they stopped wetting the bed? And, you know, lots of things, but it, it does take time. It doesn't happen, well, it does happen overnight, but perhaps not over one night. Yeah, yeah. well, we'll certainly we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep a, a, a wee sort of eye on it and, and see what we can get moving. And uh, I'll certainly be enthusiastic about it, I must admit. Um, down to three minutes, folks. Uh, Can I say one thing before, before we go? Please do. Great. Um, I made a comic for Andrew, an inclined bed comic, to to really um, bring the the message to life in colour and in pictures and a little, uh, you know, sort of uh, Andrew Fletcher in there, uh, look alike. Um, and so if people go on the site and um, on the inclined bed therapy site, they'll, they'll find the comic and it's a nice introduction um, to you know his ideas. And it really, I, I hope and I'm I'm sure it's it's helped lots of people to get the idea quickly. And then they could ask questions afterwards. So yeah. read the comic as well. Fantastic. I do love your comics. I've just read <laughs> yeah, they are great. Oh, no. <laughs> You're Avelina. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Excellent. I, I, I was puzzled as to who Rubicon was. Yeah. It's my husband's account, you see. So there oh, we go. Okay. I see. I see. Well, thank you very much, folks. I um, very much appreciate you coming on Awake Radio. And uh, uh, hopefully it won't be that long before you're back on again uh, given your experiences and uh, you know wish you the best and uh, hopefully you keep good health in, in what you're doing yes uh, thank certainly, you certainly uh, we'll report back any good health benefits for myself for sure and I would like to say thank you to all Steve's listeners yeah yeah, yeah well, for well, sticking with us yeah <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the show yeah, I'm sure they have yeah for sure well 
Uh, that's it for Gananas Workshop for this week, folks. Uh, same time, same place next week, health, health permitting. And uh, once again, uh, thank you to Andrew and the guests uh, for participating this week. And uh, take care till then. Bye for now. Right. You get off here, guys. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, really enjoyed listening to uh, to your feedback. Yeah, uh, it's going to make a powerful, powerful um, video, and um, cool. yeah, cool. I'm, I'm sure it's going to attract a lot more people with with having the personal accounts in. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Andrew, you know, as I said to you just before we come on air, if you want to do a, a regular show, maybe you know, an hour uh, with the, one of the people from the forum. That maybe not too much time for you to fill or whatever you like, but certainly it'll be provided to you free of charge, and uh, yeah, get the the information out there as best you can. And that sounds excellent. Yeah. And I mean, even if it only lasts for maybe five, six, seven weeks, uh, you know, that's okay. It's not a problem. Yeah, I'll take you up on that, Steve. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's free of charge. I mean, we ask all our hosts to be honourable in their actions, to be respectful in your actions. Keep the swearing to a minimum, and uh, you know you're free and uncensored. Yes. So that that's the policy we work on. Uh, that sounds okay, man. That's just about describing my own ethics. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ex yeah. Except I'm I'm prone to swearing if I hit my hand with a with a hammer <laughs> or something. Like that. Okay, folks. I'm sorry, really. But I'm okay, going to have Steve, to take care, mate. Because my, my that next host is now giving me grief. <laughs> 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 okay. Thanks very much, folks, and I'll speak to you soon. All right, Steve. Bye, mate. Bye, bye, now. bye, David. Bye. And bye, Donald. Bye, Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, mate.